Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is Gateway's got it. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's got it. In these busy times, you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, click the shop, click drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. I am the beneficiary of this, and it is amazing. So when you want a car dealer that has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. Welcome to an unknown number. Yeah, fifty something. Fifty something. Ep- we're gonna th- we're gonna make a priority soon to figure <laughs> out exactly what episode we're what on. Does it matter though, anyways? It really doesn't. But I do feel like we should pop in because we want to celebrate the big ones. That's true. Hundred, whatever. We'll- Speaking of celebrations, mm. happy, happy Cinco, Cinco de, de Mayo. Mayo. <laughs> um, you love. I love Cinco de Mayo. I love Mexican love, food. I love, love just margaritas. like the whole vibe of a fiesta. I love queso. I love margaritas. I love it all. I love the bright colors. I have lots of moo-moos. You know what moo-moos are? Um, I do. Is that you're not wearing? I'm this. not wearing a moo-moo, but like it's like the Mexican dress that's just right. like big and flowy. My 95 year old grandmother lived in them. Yeah, and you can just her let it final all hang year. out. <laughs> yeah, you just let it all hang out. Because nothing, so, nothing's showing. It's just like oh, it's. Whatever. I mean, it's like a drape. It's like a big blanket with a hole in it, like kind of like a poncho. Kinda, okay, but with the sides. <laughs> yeah, and they make fancy moo-moos, but I don't like fancy moo-moos. I like okay. cheap moo-moos that like I buy in Mexico, or you can get them at the market in San Antonio. But okay. regardless, it is Cinco de it Mayo, is. and we are so excited to welcome in a new sponsor to the mom game, Yo Quiero, Emily. I'm already in love with Yo Quiero. Okay, so I had never tried Yo Quiero until today. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. You were like already a, a fan. Like well, you'd already seen it, yeah. heard it, tried it, whatever. <clears throat> well, my aforementioned Mexican food problem. Um, it leads me to always grab some sort of salsa slash chip combo when I'm at the grocery store. Right. Even if I don't need it, even if I've got some already, even if I'm on a diet, if I see it there... I grab it. And I had randomly tried a Yokiero jug of salsa. And a I really, jug? Yeah, it was a jug. It had like okay. a cowboy's helmet on it. I was like, oh, it's, it's sporty. Um, and it ended up being really good. And so then when we started communicating with Yokiero, I was so excited to work with them because I, A, already knew it was delicious. B, it's some of my favorite things all rolled into one. Right. And then um, today is the day where we get to debut it to everybody. And I... Love everything that I am tasting right now. I do too. So I'm a little picky about my salsa. So uh-huh. I was a little, mm, let's just see how this is. It's amazing. It's mm-hmm. so good. The queso has like a little hint of spice, which I huge, like the little hint of spice. Huge fan of the spice. I am uh, And then the guacamole is delish too. It's not like, I don't like just the creamy guacamole. It's mm-hmm. like, give me some chunks. Mm-hmm. I need a little chunk here and there. Yep. Um, and so I, everything's fantastic. I'm so excited that they are on board with the mom game. It's so sweet. Tara even brought us margaritas for Marks. us to have. She knows us well. She does. So Mom yes. Marks. No, they don't make margaritas. They make all the other things we just referenced. They do. So um, the, oh my gosh, that was my first bite of the guac. It's delicious. So good. The avocados, she said they own a patch of land in Mexico where they grow their own avocados. Um, it and is, that's where the avocados from Mexico. Yeah. Remember that? Probably. Yeah. It was, it was like I a know. jingle. Well, no, I mean, I think it was like from the avocado board well, that's or something. Where they're, yeah. Oh, you're right. Right. There's like, I mean, apparently there's like an avocado council or something. I want to be on the avocado council. Yeah. Or just work for Yokiro. Yes. Eat this stuff all day. Um, So yes, this uh, queso, I love it because it's creamy. Like you said, a little bit spicy and I'm a huge queso connoisseur. I'm a, I'm a queso snob. Queso connoisseur. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I didn't know there there was those, but congratulations. I am am a connoisseur of queso. It has not really taken me far in life and I haven't made any money from it, but I do love it. Um, so they also come in convenient, ready to serve cups. Um, we were just learning about something they're going to push out, 
um, soon that you can put in kids' lunchboxes for back to school yeah. um, with avocado or, or guacamole in it. And like I was saying, I feel like kids really love guacamole. I, it, Hattie cannot get enough guacamole. Same. Anna, my two-year-old, it's like so she'll and, and you feel like they're eating something like that's a oh. easy to serve and good for them. Can I tell you, I feel like the best mom ever. Like, <laughs> look how healthy she's eating. I mean, right? She's crushing that guac. Exactly. And these cups, these cups that these came in, it's like you pop off the lid. It's good to go. Same with the salsa. Same with the guac. I'm learning. We can get into this a little bit more later, but I'm not a very prepared mom. Mm-hmm. Like. I've had a little bit of time off of work and my mom's been in town and it's been amazing. Like she's helping me like it's Thursday and we're like, okay, what do we have this weekend? And like, let's get things lined out. This is the baseball bag. Um, this is the soccer bag. Oh my gosh. Teacher appreciation week coming up next week. Like how can, how, I know, I know this, this is, is a foreign amazing. concept to me. I'm not prepared, but I feel like if you have a bunch of these stocked up and all of a sudden someone's like, Hey, do you want to come over for happy hour? Yeah. Or do you want to come over? And you're like, sure. Uh, I don't have time to, I mean, I can't tell you the amount of times I'm going somewhere and I'm already <sighs> running late to stop at the and store. And then I have to stop at the store. And then I have to send that like tail between my legs text. Like, I'm sorry, I'm going to be 30 minutes late because I had to stop at the store. You don't want to show up empty handed. Right. So we're suggesting here on the mom game, just buy a bunch of this because a, it's delicious. B, you can just keep it in your back fridge and then pull that stuff out. Um, whenever you get invited to go somewhere at the last minute. Yeah. Or B, if you just get really hungry. Or if you just get really hungry, yeah. I mean, why not a booth? Why not? Do all of it. Um, so yes, we're celebrating today because it is Cinco de Mayo. So if you're so inclined today, go get this right now. You can celebrate Cinco de Mayo with us, but really this is something you can have every weekend, anytime you want that uh, chip dip it's craving all, hits It's you. always guac and queso season. <laughs> it always. is always guac and queso season. So Thank you to Yo Kiero. We are so excited for all of these treats. So, so excited us, to be working with them. If you hear us crunching in the middle of the show, just know that's what's that's happening. That's why. That Go get yourself happening. some chips and you can crunch with us. There we go. How about that? Um, Jules, how are you feeling? Um, I am good. Um, for those who missed the last, I guess, episode where yeah. I was talking about it, I am two weeks out today um, from my hysterectomy. Yeah. So it's become a big thing on the ticket. Of course, you mentioned the word like uterus, uh-huh. ovaries, fallopian and it's tubes. Like my, I didn't even throw that one out there, oh, no, but I'm, too much. Sh- I'm sure if I did, uh, they'd run with that too. Oh, what's a fallopian tube? And Dude, of course, if you like hear a man squirm throughout cervix. I mean, <laughs> holy sh- <laughs> cervix. What? Um, wait, that's, I think I had that. Yeah. I had that removed too. Do you? Yeah, I did. Okay, I did too, because I have one little lonely ovary left. You do? Well, that's nice. Floating around. I don't know where it is. Like, it's just floating well, around somewhere. I don't, I don't know, know where it is. Right? You get do, your do cervix they, taken do out. Do they live in the uterus? Like, do they live in your uterus? I don't know. So if your uterus but is wait, gone. But wait, are you sure we got our cervix taken here? out? Are you sure we got our cervix taken out? No, no, no. Out? What's the thing that... Uh, maybe the I'm uterus. Like, no, what's the thing that dilates? That's the cervix. <laughs> Yes. That's taken out too? Emily, just because I had it taken out doesn't mean you did. No, my doctor told me you got all your shit removed except for one ovary. Okay, well then you don't have a cervix. I didn't I didn't know a cervix was a was an organ. I thought it was like an area. That, <laughs> well, it, it is kind of an area. I don't know. This is That's the thing that dilates to like two, three, four, okay. five. Right? Sure. Yes. I mean, I don't have one anymore. Okay. But um no. but yeah, so I talked about it on the ticket and then I can't. So I, I really loved like kind of going blindly into this thing. Obviously, like I'm sitting here like, what's the cervix? I don't know if I had it taken out or not. Same. I didn't want to know about what was happening inside of me. Yeah. And I didn't want to think about it. You know, I, I I've had quite a few surgeries and I don't mind. I mean, I don't mind it. Right. Like I it, it was funny. You know, it's always kind of a adrenaline rush when you go in and there's like all oh, these people helping you and you're going to get put under and you just are waiting for that to hit. Uh-huh. So normally. <laughs> This is how many surgeries I've had. I know like when it hits on my way to the um, operating oh. room. And so normally I'm like going through the hallway and I can kind of hear them making small talk. And then all of a sudden you're like, zonk. But this time, so I had my IV in and everything and I'm going into the operating room and we round the corner. We go into the operating room and I go, hey, I'm still here, everybody. Oh, no. Did you panic? I, a little. Yeah. But like, I mean, no, I, no, no. I'm I, supposed to be I out made by sure now. to tell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I've never seen like the actual operating room. Uh-huh. Um, and, and you, I wonder too, for them, is it weird? Like they're wondering if you're out and if they need to talk about, like, do they need to make small talk like you're listening or can they talk about the real shit that they want to talk about? Like, uh, all right, what are we doing to this bitch today? 
<laughs> what I, so. Which I'm sure is exactly what your surgeon said. God, I hope he's not listening. He's like, I'm so offended. I'm trying to be professional with this woman. Or that could be the anesthesiologist. I feel like right. the anesthesiologist is always the joke guy. Oh, He makes jokes yeah, about like putting jokes. you under and huh? he's full of jokes. Um, but this time I was rounding in. I was like, hey, everybody, I'm still here. And I guess my arm had been bent. And so the IV wasn't fully oh, going flowing. through. And they were like, oh, okay. And then they noticed they were like, straighten out your arm and we'll see you later. Um, and then I, I straightened out my arm and bam. Next thing I know, I'm like in recovery and Kelly's there. I'm looking up and I'm trying so hard to like, I wish I could have a video of it. I know. I was trying so hard to talk to him and tell him like how much I loved him for being oh. there. And I was just like, yeah, right. <laughs> That, that is one of my biggest fears whenever I do get put under uh -huh. is like the shit I'm going to say when I'm coming out. Uh -huh. Like maybe it's best not to let anyone back here for a while. Think about Let's, the stories that they can have. Can you imagine? Because I think about like weird dreams that I have and yeah. like the, how ridiculous they are. And, right. And I'm like, if that's what's happening when I'm just like sleeping on what? my own accord, right. and what is happening when I'm filled full of drugs yeah. and saying stuff. What a weird place to be, that place Such in between place. coming out of yes. anesthesia and like real life. It, yeah. And I feel like it's like dangerous. Like what did they used to say? Like um, when, when P I heard, this is weird from college, like a drunk man's words or a sober man's thoughts. I remember like when like us girls would get together and like, that's really a guy wow, would like a scary true say, statement would say like drunk things to you, like how much he loved you. And then the next day he, whatever didn't, oh, yeah. like, didn't He'll pretend like he didn't know you. it. And we'd be like, girl, a drunk man's thoughts or no, we would say girl, a drunk man's words are a sober man's thoughts. That is how he really feels about you. He really does love you. He wouldn't have said that <laughs> when he was drunk if he didn't mean so it. So now we just got to take like a year to two to ten to get those feelings to come all the way back out to where they're. <laughs> I mean, to where they're spoken listen, as a sober person, and it takes these dudes like for fucking ever oh. to get back to that spot. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can't. That's why I, mean, I said that a, a million times in college. Oh, honey. He, like still, there's some real feelings deep. He down. still loves you. He still loves you. Um, I have a, a drunk man's words or a sober man's thoughts. I He's have, still into you. That is amazing. I haven't heard that, but it. I mean, it, oh yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, I have a funny story about a, a doctor friend who will remain nameless and she's a nurse actually. And she does catheters like for oh. her job. Can you imagine? No. She said, she was like, I'm telling you 95% of men when you're doing their catheter and they're in there, like for whatever reason, they're about to have surgery or for whatever reason they need this catheter. They all say it's, it's cold in here. Oh, my God. She's like, every single one of, of them. Of course they do. Every single one of, of them. It's cold in here. Don't mind me. It's like just a 95 year old man. Isn't I'm that sure. weird? Oh. She was like, doesn't matter the race. It doesn't matter the age. They all make the same damn that, joke. That is hilarious. <laughs> and also, too, not surprising at all. Well, and she's like, you girl, like, oh, so oh my God. They I'm feel, they, they feel uh, like they I'm have sure they're to. mortified. They're like doing all kinds of stuff oh to try God, to make it not. So I know small. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just such a weird that thing. That is like, one thing about being a woman. Like mm -hmm. so much sucks, right? Like it's mm -hmm. all out there. Like this is, these are the, you know, what's down there. <laughs> like it's pretty much all the same. Yeah. Right. I mean, or at least you can, I mean, down there, I think down there is pretty much all the same. I think, I mean, yeah, Roughly. you can totally have like a I mean, nice up here's, rack or not, right. but, up but here's down different, there. But you're, you can tell by a shirt what you're dealing with <laughs> basically. <laughs> Um, <laughs> however, there are some really good bras out there, I'm sure. Um, but with men, it's like, you know, yeah, you got to like get to what third base. What, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> what is that? And then what if face? you don't, Oh, we haven't had the base talk. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's, it depends on what life stage you're at. <laughs> True. Base talk probably yeah. goes out of the window. The like, base talk now is like. Definitely when you're married. Yeah, I mean, who fucking different. rounds the bases anymore when you're married? <laughs> like, um, you got one thing. <laughs> just, one thing. Let's get this shit over with. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway. yeah, so that's a lot of, you know, you can't tell. And then it. whenever you get <laughs> exposed to that, they want it to be, you know. Mm -hmm. They want like they, to be proud pro oh. and it's, they probably have so much anxiety, so much anxiety. I've never really thought about that. Now I feel bad for them. Don't feel bad. for them, <laughs> please. Don't feel bad. Yeah. Cause we don't yeah, have, so there's this we like, don't have like some big reveal. No, no. I mean, basically it's like, eh, here it is. <laughs> I mean, 
just peel back one layer. They have a you big know? reveal. They do. And then, and then if like, you ghost them the next day, it could not be for that reason. Right. It could be because yeah. you I mean, didn't like them. They had bad breath. Like you didn't think they were funny. Right. Whatever. But they're going to probably think. But it's, it's a, yeah. Yeah. Because you, there's, you have no clue what's going on okay. down there. And not that it, I mean, I don't, I love where this has gone. Um, <laughs> I didn't know this where you're so going fun. with the, I love this is so fun. in the beginning. <laughs> But yeah, well, that I mean, is. Margarita's in I here mean, more I often. do. I do feel badly. I mean, that's not. Fu- I don't know. It's not fun. But like, do do women really care? Like, oh, did, oh, did you see they, the they size don't. of that one? They don't. They don't like. Not like they think we care. No one. No one talks about. And I will. T- this is for real. Men. She's looking at the camera. Promise, I am telling this you. Is this is getting serious, dudes. It, unless it's really big or really small, no one. Ca- no one's talking about it. It's right. True. No yeah. one's talking about. It. If yeah. it's really small, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like, I mean, not for me, but like, that's not a, that's an unfortunate thing if yeah. that's being talked about. If it's really big, like also too, that kind of sucks too, because yeah. it's like, yeah, I mean, we well, don't want it to be too, yeah. Right. So like, if you're, unless you're on one end of the spectrum or the other, <laughs> then just go with it to be proud. Just go with it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Right. People yeah. worry too much about that. Boy, us, I sure us. am glad we could give the, <laughs> our male listeners their Daily pep talk about they the size of this. their penis. They're not going to get this on the ticket. They're not. You're right. They're not going to get they're this not. on um, um, their podcast they're listening to. That's was, not the mom game. This was not in the rundown today. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. Um, but thanks for asking. I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> That's where I just started. Further reminder not to let my children listen to this ever. <laughs> no. Um, it's Yeah. So it's been a couple of weeks. I'm doing well. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, Back to hysterectomy. I'm trying talk. to get the, the hormone thing straightened out. That's my next. Okay. I called my doctor today and um, I did get approved to get low dose hormones, like at least till I'm 40. Cause that was kind of a question mark oh, yeah. if I could, because with of my, the cancer. yeah, with the cancer, with the cancer. Um, um so I'm going to get testosterone that. or estrogen, um, estrogen. Okay. So, cause I told you I started testosterone. Yeah. Cause <clears> I was having the night sweats. Yeah. And I'm still having, I don't feel like there's regular. I had one last night that was like, I did too. What the fuck is going on? Right yeah. Now? Like literally drenched in sweat. I mean, it was, does it, I, does it wake you up? Oh it, yeah. yeah. This one woke me up. This happened to me last yeah, th- night. This was like change the pajamas. Um, Sucks. like just uh, your, my hair's drenched. Yeah. Like I come out cur- curly hair and I'm like, this is right. what happens. It's, like it's so full weird. On humidity. Cause I love making my house really cold yep. when I sleep. Same. We're 69. What are you on? <clears throat> Very 68, nice. 68. Just cause I don't want to be weird. So we 69. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I popped down to 68 because Dan McDowell's gotten in my damn head <laughs> about that. Yeah. So yeah. is, you know, Dave Raymond, my broadcast partner with the Rangers. Yeah. That's, there was a whole bit there. I was in the same, um, he's a follower. Uh, yes. It's all, it's, it's all the it's things. It's good. Um, but yeah. And then I also had like a bad dream last night. So I was, so my doctor told me there would be about two weeks where my old hormones would still be there. So weird. Like, they, where they, where, okay. So <laughs> where are they going? Did I pee them? Do I pee them? I don't know. Okay. Um, but Maybe I think, I think they here. went away yesterday because Maybe. last night was my first night where it was like, oh, is this like what the menopause stuff is? Maybe they came out in your night sweats. Maybe I sweated out my hormones. Yeah. There, I'm sure there's some science there. Let's go with that. Um, so anyway, I called the doctor first thing. I was like, okay, because I had been lollygagging on getting that prescription going. Yeah. But hopefully once I get that going and I get the estrogen flowing, I won't have that anymore. And uh, that's all of our estrogen Surgery, ovary, uterus talk for the day. Yes. Um, Okay. So you had a busy weekend. So, okay. First of all, I loved your day in the life. If you didn't see it um, and you hated it, if you didn't see it, I forced, (laughs) forced. She did. um, Emily to do day in a life. Let's say guilted. I guilted. Oh, I just said, you know what? A little more like something going on on our social channels and we need to build up this thing. Um, and you have a really badass job and I also am interested. I was very interested. I'm like, how the hell does she do all of this and like pull all of this off? And you are like the energizer bunny. You have more energy than anybody I know. I don't understand. And that, and it's awesome. And I'm jealous. Um, but Emily did a day in the life on our Instagram page last week. Um, and it was, I mean, you went on, I think three runs by the time I'd like gone potty for the first time. (laughs) So in the day, yeah, it, so it's like, get the kids get up. Well, Mike yeah. was at, Mike was out of town. Right. So I was on kid duty as far as like, make sure they wake up, whatever. On this particular day, I did not have to make sure they were awake. Like I went into the closet to go put on my workout clothes or whatever. <clears throat> I, I come out and I can hear them. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to video this. I open the door to my bathroom. I mean, from my bathroom to my bedroom. And it's like two dogs, Hattie's on a hoverboard it was awesome. and Henry's 
laying in bed saying he had a stroke. What? And I'm like, oh yeah, I put the camera on. And I was like, <laughs> oh, good morning, everyone. Is. Say, I told you I dropped him off at school one day and he's like, I can't, I can't go to school. I have rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> no, you have not told me that. Swear to God. I went to drop. Is he Googling things? No, he's watching ESPN. He's watching Sports I have Center. rheumatoid arthritis. So he, we pull up to school and he's like, I can't, I don't think I can go to school today, mommy. I'm like, why? And he's like, I have rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> I was like, you're, or plaque psoriasis. No, it was plaque psoriasis. That was it. I did plaque psoriasis. He said, I have plaque psoriasis. Rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis is next on the That's, list. He's next. gonna pull that one. Yeah, like anyway, so he's whatever. So he's like laying in my bed, Hattie's on in the hoverboard. I mean, it just was a whatever S show. But everyone's morning is. Oh, That's always. what I think the beautiful thing always. is. We're all and the same. so what happens is I get the kids up and then I I get like er, they were already up. Go eat some breakfast, go get dressed. I'm gonna go for a run. Don't kill each other. Because they're old gone. enough. You, yeah. 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 You um, and I'm only going on our na- around our neighborhood. Yeah. So then I get try to get a couple miles in before school. And then, yeah. And then <laughs> t- get them to school where they ride their bike and I run alongside them like a really trusting mother. Like every day. I don't do that? do that all the time. I did it today. I didn't do it yesterday. It just mm-hmm. depends. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then like I'll come back and then I like that day I walked, to, I ran to Starbucks and then walked home. And then the last leg is to take the dogs because the dogs feel left out. So I try to do six miles. The dogs dogs can't go in that first one. Are they not ready? They haven't had their coffee yet? They're not ready. (laughs) They're not ready. I'm not ready because they're pulling sometimes and Mm. my patience isn't quite there yet. It's not like an actual. So yeah, we did the, we did the day in the life. It was, it was really, actually it was fun, Julie, but I will say people who post like that's their thing, like they're an influencer and they're posting about their lives all the time, like to each his own. If that's your jam, get after it. It was so exhausting and I didn't even do fun stuff like stickers and <laughs> I did some music, but like, I was like, I'm trying to be creative, but like Instagram's got a lot going on so these much days. Go- and I'm like, I, I've just did, done like a, a two minute video. And then you want me to go back and put like words and stickers <laughs> and st- And I'm like, at this point, like, it's just, I'm recording hit send. Yeah. Like y'all can all figure this shit out and make pretty it up if you want to. Right. But I, that, that's, it's exhausting. It's a lot. And then I'm thinking to myself, Here's what I'm doing right now. But people, did you see how many people? Uh, I did. A didn't. lot of people. Okay. You got messages. I, you're right. We did. We did. We got messages. Um, you know, and then, but I did think it was fun. Like in the morning, that's usually kind of like, I'm just super alone. And then like the whole braid thing, I thought was like really funny. Like, it was I'm like, so funny. I can't wait to talk to people about this braid. Cause my hair is always such the item of contention. And then. I have this little I can't wait to talk to people about this. And I'm like, well, because I just want to crack on myself. Right, exactly. You guys are wondering if this is an extension. Did you see the poll that I put up? No, how did you do the joke with Joey? Yeah, I said, who was the bigger star of Emily's day in the life? And it was your braid versus Joey Gallo. And I did a side by side. Yeah. Oh my God, your braid won Won. in a landslide. It was like 70 to 30%. This is why. Over Joey Gallo. Your braid needs to start getting paid. This is why I love mom gamers because they get us. They get us. My skinny, my little rat tail braid was more important than Joey Gallo. No, it makes me so The whole thing was so much fun. And, um, it was I'm, fun. I'm so we sh- saved it under yeah. our, our highlight. It's on my, did you see I did that? Yep. You did. And I, you know, I was going to, but the Wi-Fi wasn't working at the ballpark. Mm-hmm. But once I got home and had my glass of wine mm-hmm. and was watching some summer house reunion or yeah. some shit like oh, that. Oh, that was another thing. Like, I was like, surely she's going to sleep. I mean, I was going to oh, sleep. No. And I you were like, well, just got everything done. I'm going to go do my lap around the house. I'm pouring <laughs> a glass of wine and I'm going to watch summer house. Yeah. I was like, are you even kidding me? Like, I'm, yeah. it's amazing. It's it's not, it's not amazing. It is. It's probably dumb, but whatever. Um, no, well, you've got to have your you time. And so yes, that's how you have to exactly. do it. And I have to wind down yeah. from getting home from work. Yeah. You know, um, what was I saying? I totally forgot. Um, I don't know. Well, oh, oh, we saved it under the highlights. Yes. 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 And I, we did, I did save everything that was on there. So the whole shit shows there for everyone to see. Yeah. And you are going to do this when you go back to work. Yes. At the ticket. Yes. And that's going to be so funny because you know, those dudes are if you, cause you're going to have the interaction with the dudes yeah. too. And yeah. they're going to think, I mean, they're going to think I'm the biggest tool, uh, but who cares? But I mean, they already do. So well, cares? I might as well uh, play into that. Uh, turn the tables a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like it. No, we offense, can, but we can all those call aren't like exactly that. the coolest guys in the world. I mean, you know, Love them, but love them. Like they make damn good radio. They make very good radio, and they're funny. They're cool. They're hilarious. Um, but yes, I could turn the table. But it's um, not like they're Joe Cools. No, all of them. no, no, no. They're not. And so I'm gonna put them all over my Insta feed. I think love that it. when I go back Monday, I think they're the Hang Zone is gonna be in studio with me for the first time. That'll be awesome. Since last March, 
That's so amazing. I'm really excited. Yeah. To see everybody in person. We'd been Zooming and it was like, like for one, it's just not the same. For two, it was like, are you kidding me? I have to think about one more damn thing as I'm walking out the door. I got to bring my computer or my iPad and then I got to bring all the kids shit and I got to remember to take the kids to school and then I got to remember yeah. my lunch and I got to, well, it was just like, I don't want to bring my thing anymore. Yeah. Um, so no, it'll be really good to get back in the studio and get back to work. And it's been fun to be able to do this a little bit this week, just to like ease back into it. Yeah. I mean, just getting back on the Rangers home dugout, like getting yes. back in. So How now, is tier, your new tier? Tier two. Uh-huh. It's pretty amazing. Now the one drawback is I have to test twice a week for COVID. Do, 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 is so is like it the today, pain? No, it it's a spit. Oh, okay. So the team's on the road. So, but I still had to go up there today um, because I have to test even when they're on the road because I have to test twice a week. I have to maintain that in order to maintain my tier two status. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but it's fine. And I will tell you, like even just one week being back at batting practice, being able to shoot the shit with the guys, introducing myself to guys who I've only met through Zoom has made a huge difference. Did you think that they, like, did, did they recognize you, the ones you had only met on Zoom? Um, Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Um, that's good. Yeah. And they're, everyone's so nice. And I think honestly too, they're, they're excited to see someone different. Mm-hmm. Like it, it wouldn't matter if like Jabba the Hut rolled out, they'd be like, Oh my gosh, it's a new person. This is amazing. Uh, yeah. And so, um, it, it's been, it's been great. Obviously the, you know, the, the older guys are the guys that have been around for a while. It was nice to reconnect with them. And then the newer guys, you know, it was like, I think some of them, you know, probably like Who's the old lady in the dugout? What's they happening? Are not. No, I'm just kidding. But if they've ever watched a Ranger game, they were. <laughs> they know but who you they, are. But they, everybody's been great, and it's been fantastic. And I feel like it's done a lot for my, like, mental. Yes, it really has. Yeah. Like to be able to not feel like I'm just relying on these Zoom calls, and I still get on them. I still get on them every day. Yeah. But it, to not have to rely on those, and to be able to have these face to face conversations, albeit I'm wearing a mask, it still is a it's a pretty big deal to me. So you get to do a pre and a post. In person? So I get to be in the dugout during batting practice. So that was my whole thing. Just get me to batting practice. I don't care about going in the clubhouse. I don't care about any of that. Get me to batting practice where I can sit in the dugout. Guys can sit down beside me or I can, whatever. We can shoot the shit, not even interviews. Just like, Hey man, what's going on? Yeah. Um, and then if they win, if they win, I do get a post game walk off. There was talk whether we were going to put headphones on the guy and I was going to stand six feet away in a mask and he, and then finally we were like, okay, um, you're fully vaccinated. You wear a mask. The player will not, you can hold the microphone. So I'm like, that was at least, so that's perfectly normal with the exception of the mask. And right. if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. I don't right. care. Um, but so much so, better than so, the headset thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And two, I feel like that's like, I feel like that people that, that, that whatever, who's doing, I feel like it's total bullshit. Like really? You, I mean, I don't it's, know. It's, it's just protocols. For it's just for it's show. It's just it's so they sh- don't have some lawyer down their neck and Same they don't thing. have to pay a bunch of I money. Go, the team is on the road. I will go to the ballpark today and have my temperature taken twice. And I have to fill out a form. Okay. The Rangers will come back in town. I will enter a stadium full of 20,000 people who have not had their temperature te- checks, temperatures checked or filled out a form. Like where, tell me where the it logic doesn't. is. And it is, it's just these people. And I get it. Companies, corporations, organizations have to see YA and that's fine. But I'm just saying, if you look at it from that vantage point, it looks pretty ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, but it's good that you're back. Yes. And that you can do those kinds of things. They've been winning a few games and it it looks like there's some fun guys. I saw your interview with Jose Trevino after he hit a home run and he said his son told him to hit a home run. I was like, that's precious. He's been waiting on him. Yeah. They're, it's a great, it's a great group. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're a good bunch of dudes. Um, and they're, they're in all these games. There are very few games where they're like just getting the shit kicked out of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, very few. Yeah. So they're, they're. They've got an exciting team to watch. They've got a fun group of guys. Um, they just got to figure out how to put it all together. Yeah. I feel like when we were prognosticating before the season, this is like kind of best case, best case would be like going off and just winning every game. Right. This is pretty up there. It's like a you good group of stay. guys. You wanna, yeah. And you they're wanna, somewhat in the mix. Figure things out and yes. have her around five. Exactly. Okay. Mark. Where's Mark? <laughs> Senior. Um, oh, Senior Mark. Okay. Uh, so let's get, I'm going to text Mark to get us margaritas. Yeah. Cause we, I want to try what you had. We're, yeah, and I want to try what and you, you want to try what I had. But in the meantime, we do still have one of our other very loyal sponsors working with us on this edition of the Mom Game. And obviously, we talk a lot about wine on here. Today's a, a fun uh, Cinco de Mayo show, so we're really pumping up all of the Tex Mex and the Margs. But late at night, I mean, Marg oh. is my Marg is like my happy hour preference. Um, wine is my nighttime wine down preference, and. 
I, of course, always turn to Noble Vines Wine, and they are back with us on this episode because this show is going to air on uh, Wednesday of Mother's Day week. And Emily, we need to talk about Mother's Day next coming up, maybe on the other side of this. Okay. Um, but Noble Vines is mm, probably the thing that your wife, mom wants for Mother's Day. I love Noble Vines because they're really good people. They aim to bring out the best in wine and in people. Their vine stocks, I love hearing their, their story here, their vine stocks, excuse me, originate from highly coveted vineyards in France. Selecting the best of these vine stocks and cultivating them in California has earned Noble Vines its quality reputation. Noble Vines 337 Cabernet Sauvignon with its rich, full-bodied style. Um, that is the wine that I probably drink the most from Noble Vines. Has aromas of cherry and blackberry and suave tannins. They invite you to enjoy while watching or attending the Charles Schwab Challenge, which yes. is going to be going down in Fort Worth in, in my your hood. hood. And Noble Vines is the official wine partner of the 75th Charles Schwab Challenge at Colonial Country Club in Fort Worth. That will be May 27th through May 30th, 2021. I love that because I love, I don't know, I really... I really like watching golf. I love going to the golf tournaments. So, and Colonial's the best. That's my club. That's our, that's, that's we're members of Colonial. Oh, yeah. Fun. And it's one of the most fun weekends of the year. And now with tickets, all drinks and food are included. Oh, so people cool. who go Is that new? to Colonial, yes. That's amazing. People who go to Colonial will be able to have Noble sample. Vines. Noble Vines. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yep. Cause they are the official wine sponsor of that. I mean, I, I hope that's true too. I well, can't imagine they would be the official wine sponsor and they wouldn't be right. so serving I bet you Noble they do. Vines. I yes. bet you they do. Enjoy the 337 Cabernet Sauvignon, which I just talked about the 446 Chardonnay, the 667 Pinot Noir and the new Marquis Red. While you're at home, like we often do at your favorite restaurant or bar, you can find Noble Vines there or at that tournament that we just discussed, the Charles Schwab challenge. At Colonial Country Club, must be 21 or over, Noble Vines, Napa and Manteca, California. Please drink responsibly. Thank you, Noble Vines, for working with the mom game once again. My mom's in town, and we've been having some Noble Vines wine. Not, Not every night. That. I'm recovering, yeah. but um, easing back in. Yeah, Easing sure. back in. And I love having just stuff. To tr we've, we've had this meal train going. Oh, oh man, I wish I would have no, gotten in you're on the good. meal train. You don't need to get in on the meal train. You've done enough. I you're feel doing like enough. an asshole. No, no, no. I well, sent you cookies. You sent me cookies. and I, I brought you cookies. Did you, you like, some cookies. did you like my uh, message from I Adam and I? I did. We I brought, brought you, you some, some cookies. cookies. Um, but yeah, I'm a full on like meal train advocate. Now, anytime I hear about someone needing one, I'm yeah. going to like jump on that because it's been amazing. And also because I'm feeding my mom, like my mom has been, I've been leaning hard on her. Yeah. Um, which someday, so someday, I don't know, maybe there will be a day when I don't lean so hard on my mom. Yeah. I'm th almost 36 years old. I know. But, it, but she loves it I think it, she though. likes it. Yeah. They like to be wanted. They like to be needed. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think so too. Um, so it's been fun to be able to feed her, Yeah, you know, like come take care of me and you don't have to buy dinner or cook dinner. Yes, exactly. Um, so that's been good. And we've had lots of vino and I think we're going to have some margs tonight As after, you should. after, um, the t-ball game. Yes. Um, so you were like in the middle of all of this other stuff we have discussed, you were spearheading the school auction yeah. over the weekend. We just recently had our virtual one for my kids school. And I know it's a big thing at almost every school. So it's, well, I mean, I don't know if it's every school. Or is it private? Like, no, no, it's no, not, private. not private. No, it's just what you just like, you know, it's like the PTA run, like they have different fundraisers throughout the year. And yeah. this is the auction, which is like the spring fundraiser and yeah. Um, I think it sparks a broader conversation of like how, like do you get involved in all the PTA, PTA okay. auction stuff. Why? And, great and how does it usually yeah. go? And just I'm, for all moms. Well, and you, and you, you still have it at the preschool level, mm -hmm. but it'll get more intense. I know it's about to, I know it is. Um, so I am like, I, I, I don't want to go to PTA meetings. Yeah. I went to my first PTA meeting a couple years ago mm -hmm. and, um, like it, it was, I guess the changing of the guard. And that's why I went. Cause I was going to, I chaired it the auction two years ago at the old school. So I went, cause I thought that was what I was supposed to do. And I walk in and it was like, uh, uh, people are crying, giving up their spots oh, and whoa. it was, it, and it lasted a long time. And I just remember oh like, my gosh. what's, what is, what's happening here? And so I had work to do. So I like just went and sat in a corner and what's worked on my, worked on my laptop until it was time for us to like go up and say, mm -hmm. yep, here we are. So after that, I was like happy to do anything to help our school. Probably not going to go to the PTA meetings. Um, it's, it was just a I, lot. It, it was a lot. Yeah. Um, but so this by, by co-chairing, I had two co-chairs, which are dear friends of mine and we had a blast doing it. 
Um, this is a way where you can like help your school give back. And then they, you know, like one of us, one of the three would go to the meeting. And then, so we kind of divvied up things. I was like in totally in to do this, not going to go to the meetings. Um, but I happy to help. And I love to plan events and throw You're good at planning and organizing. You've got a lot of contacts. So we threw a big party and it was fun. But then anytime you do something like that, that's, that's a big thing. Then people always want to tell you the things you should do differently. Was there like a a survey? Did you seek this advice? No, no, no survey. I mean, I don't, I, I, like I look at the bottom of your seat well, and call listen, this number and it, tell me what you think about my auction. <laughs> yes. No, they just told you. Yeah, just told you. Well, so it's like, here's the deal. First of all, everyone who's doing these jobs, they're doing them on a volunteer basis. Yeah. So, but, but also too, I'm not immune to feedback for sure. I, I mean, it's not like I think I've got shit figured out. So yeah, feedback is great and all that kind of stuff, but it's just like, I don't know every, when some, when, when you have throwing a, an event like this, where like everyone's a lot of people are coming and it's a whatever, it just solicits a lot of feedback. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> feedback. So, <laughs> so you just, you know, it's like you've worked really hard to try to do obviously the best job that you can. And yes, and you're making decisions because you think they're the best decisions that can be made. Right. It's not like, we're just like, ah, let's just do like whatever. We don't really care. Yeah. Right. I mean, the, the whole reason we're doing this is because we care about the school. Yeah. So it's like, you put all this thought into it and then if people want to come in and here and there and here and there. And so I just finally got to the point where it was like, you know, first of all, it's just like, it's like Twitter. It's like social media. The vast majority of the people, super nice, kick ass, complimentary, nice. And it's not like I just need to hear nice things. I, I get it. But it's like at some point in time, you just kind of have to say, this is the way we decided to do it. This is what we decided to do. And and then if they want to change it next year, it's not going to hurt it. my feelings. Mm-hmm. Get after it. But like we had this. So we switched schools from an old school to a new school. There was this tradition that all the kindergarten classes made swings. It, these swings and they were beautiful and elaborate and they like hang from a big giant tree and did they do it at school or at they do, so they do it at school, but uh-huh. like each class did one and the room moms really helped. This was a big deal. Now it's COVID. You can't, I can't, we can't stick that on our teachers. So it's like, we just made one project per grade mm-hmm. and there are these benches. And it's like, again, if this doesn't become a tradition, fine. This is just what we decided to do right. this year. But there was a lot of people who were, or I shouldn't say a lot, people who were very upset that the swings didn't happen. But I was like, I'm not doing that to our teachers. And quite frankly, I, I just, I don't, I, I just don't think it's a good idea. And that COVID was, it, and that's tied in with the auction was it's it's like so a you, service project. You auction off. No, you auction off these swings that the kids like paint. Oh, and then like they go for a lot of money you because people want the swing from their class, from their kindergartner. Oh, so then we just, we d- ditched all Sorry. the class projects and went to one project per grade uh-huh. that didn't go over. Exactly okay. Well, well people don't like change. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I guess I just, to, I'm just like, you know, so I'm like, I'll pass along to next year's chairs. Like happy to provide feedback for them on the things that people have brought to my attention. But like at this point in time, we're not, I mean, we're, listen, we're already this far down the road. And, and it's, I mean, we're, you just kind of like, if you sign up for something, you're going to have to do it and but you're going to have to deal with time thing. Yes. Well, I mean, I've done it twice now, but, oh. <laughs> but I, but you Are you going to retire? I th- I'm, th- I'm done. Yeah, I think I'm done. Are you done? I mean, I think you need to be unless I think you can take a smaller role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, now I have to focus all my attention on not coaching Hattie's softball team. Right. So yeah, I think I'm done. But anyway, it was a great event. It was so much fun. Raised a lot of money, raised a ton of money. There was, uh, it was people came and had a fun, it was a party. Oh my uh, God. We, I bet they were so ready to party. Were we, they extra Oh my drunk? gosh. Everybody like, was, you, did you no, like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> not um, you. No, I, but I'm just not the gin pop. Throw any gin I feel like pop. the gin pop's going to be extra drunk for like gin a year. Gin pop had a very good time. Trust me. Um, so yeah, it was fun. Everybody, we danced and there was a DJ. I mean, it was just fun. It was fun. And so anyway, I'm awesome. I'm glad I break any bones. No, I didn't (laughs) tear any ligaments. So yeah, it just was nice to have fun, you know? Good. And so that's what it's all about. It's it's bringing people together and have fun. You raise raise money money. for the school. There's always going to be some Karens. Yes. Always, no matter what it is that we're doing, but that's awesome that you did that. Yeah. Um, my quick, uh, virtual auction story because yeah. our, I guess we were not quite as progressive or whatever, but, um, and, and they just planned it so far in advance. They didn't know what it was going to yeah. look like. We did a virtual auction. And at first I was kind of like, Oh, virtual blah, but it worked out. Cause I had just had surgery. So I was sitting around at home and my mom was in town and my aunt and uncle came over cause we were watching 
the stars game that night. And so I just like, I just kind of surprised them all with like, Hey, I've got this virtual auction going on. Y'all have some drinks at my house and I'm going to like be oh. like an auctioneer. <laughs> so you're hosting it. No, just in my, in my living room with my family. Oh, I thought you said like, I'm going to, Oh, so you're like telling them what my family happening. came over to watch okay. the stars game and I surprised attacked him. I sneak attacked him with the virtual auction. <laughs> okay. But you weren't, I thought you said I'm going to be like an auctioneer in my living room. Oh, so you're doing, okay. So like, I'm, it, like it. Yeah. So I was like telling my mom and my aunt and uncle, um, about all the things, the packages and everything, just in case while they were sitting there at my house, they wanted to buy something. So <laughs> they came over to watch a hockey game. Yeah. They left with, um, my uncle bought a, uh, smoker. Okay. My mom, this cracks me up. My mom bid on a trip to Panama, Panama. <laughs> She wanted to be the starting bid. So, um, and it never know, went anywhere after no that. Ever, never, no. never touched it. No, 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 no. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she bid on a trip to Panama. Um, Panama? Uh huh. What's and, okay? Help me. What's in Panama? Um, well, there is a beach, but this was not at the beach. This was in the mountains in the middle of uh, Panama. And, um, it looked beautiful, but it's very so remote. Confused. My stepdad's sitting over there, like, you can't drink the water. <laughs> I'm not going to Panama just, oh you know, gosh. like, like guys will do. And so my mom like bit on it. And as the night like is going on, I'm like, no one's bidding on this. I think this is it. And so we Holy start shit. like trying to get like fake excited for Panama. My mom said she wanted to see the Panama Canal someday. And okay. she, I think she is like very, like everybody. Is like, this at least close to the Panama Canal? It, it's, or a do you have- <laughs> it's a couple hours. It's a couple hours. hours. <laughs> it's a boutique hotel, um, in the mountains of Panama. Um, and, uh, but she, she had her, like many people canceled birth, 65th birthday, nothing happened. 66th birthday. It was still weird. She wasn't yeah, how many traveling. The trips she for? wanted to go and she was, had a few drinks and I'm, I'm her daughter sitting here trying to sell her a trip to Panama. How, how many, tri- how many people? Um, three bedrooms. Um, yeah, three, three oh, bedrooms, who cares 1500 bucks Shut the for hell. the trip to Panama. Yeah. Okay, and so we're in. sitting here, I'm like Googling. I'm like, well, it looks kind of nice. Okay, long story short, she bid on the trip to Panama, won the trip to Panama. We were trying to, like, get excited, and I was like, oh, my God, I don't know. It looks weird. Um, The next morning, we emailed, and they had some leftover certificates that they let us choose from. Because then I'm thinking, like, oh, man, a beach. Like, we Mm -hmm. could probably sell more people on the beach vacation and coming with us. So we ended up with a trip to St. Lucia. Oh. Yeah. When? Um, It'll be a while. It'll be, like, next summer. Who cares? Who cares? But um, it, it was a lot of fun, and, like, I ended up buying extra stuff. You just buy extra stuff because it all goes to the school. For I have sure. this random like gift thing of like all these places I've never heard of with gift cards too. So I'm going to go exploring Dallas someday and use my Good gift cards. You. Yeah. So um, it was fun. I will be glad when hopefully all of the parties and all of the things in real life can start coming back. And I feel like we're on the verge. We're on the cusp. Yes. Of all of that. I felt, I, I feel like we are too. Um, okay. So how much did you love all of this stuff? On our table. Loved it. I, in fact, I just, while you were telling the, your Panama story, I just <laughs> scarfed down my guacamole and hot sauce. I've been doing that. I'm like, okay, she's going to talk for a while. I'm going to scarf down. We've been like rotating. You're safe. You're safe. <laughs> yeah. So thank you to Yo Kiro. Mm-hmm. Um, totally in love with the product. Uh-huh. Quick um, Mother's Day. Talk. Yeah. Do you have plans? What do y'all do for Mother's Day? Uh, what do so you I was, want? I was supposed to work. Um, I ended up taking the day off. Good. Because I'm like, why am I doing this? Yeah. So we will go to church in the morning and then we'll go to brunch. Um, and then Henry keep my kids, Henry, especially, but both my kids keep asking me what I want. And I'm like, I really just want to like go to brunch, have a couple of mimosas, like come home and maybe just lay in my bed and watch a movie. Like my choice. We all want. Yeah. But the kid, I'm like, you're well, I'll watch something that's relatively kid friendly. Like, uh, but just like, you couldn't even give them that. Really? I mean like PG 13. Yeah. Like, you know, I feel like that's a that's fine. Mm-hmm. So maybe just do that. Like just mm-hmm. chill out. Like, especially during the, cause of the season, I mean, you know, we're only a month into the season, but still it's a lot. Together. I mean, yeah, I've been working. I've, I've, I front loaded my schedule a lot to where I'm working a lot at the beginning of the season. So good. Yeah. Just a day. What about you? That'll be nice. Um, usually this one's going to be weird. Cause Kelly's still going to be gone. He gets home the day Sucks. after mother's day. Okay. Um, and my mom's going to go home, I think. So I'll be with the kids, but it'll be a weird one, but I'm just going to try to take them to go play or just do yeah. something. Cause really like I just am, it sounds sappy, but like just I've had a few no weeks. I'm just really enjoying spending time with them. Time with them. They're pretty really cute right now when they're not trying to kill each other. Freaking out. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to do that. But usually, yeah. yes, I just want to relax. Yeah. P 
Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Your wife just wants to relax. Yeah, that's all she wants, really. On Mother's Day. Um, yeah. Okay. So thank you, Yokiro. Next week, so stoked. Yes. My dude, Ian Kinsler, will be in studio with us. Um, Ian, I've known Ian for a long, long time, mm -hmm. and we've become friends, yeah. and we've been friends for a long time. And um, he's he's just one of my favorite people because he's such a pull no punches type mm -hmm. of guy, which is exactly how you are. My it's exactly how I am, but it, I, I so appreciate people that are like that. And mm -hmm. Ian's been that way with me from day effing one. And so it'll be fun to catch up with him. It'll yeah. Be really fun. It's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. That is next week. Hope you all have a very happy Cinco de yes. Mayo. Remember yo Kiero when you're going shopping, remember classic, uh, gateway Buick GMC when you're car shopping, Noble Vines when you're wine shopping and remember to keep on listening, sharing, telling your friends about the mom game and we will be back next week with yep. the one and only Ian Kinsler. Mom game out. Mom game out. Cheers.